When you're in San Sebastian, it's all about eating pinchos. And that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna go on a pincho tour. We've got a long list of places that we're gonna hit. We're gonna see how many we can get to. But the thing is, we're not in the, in the historic center. We've gone out into the off the beaten path neighborhood of Gros to, to eat pinchos where the locals eat pinchos. It's gonna be delicious. We're gonna give you lots of tips. So, venga, let's go. I'm James Blick and welcome to Spain Reveal. This channel is all about helping you understand and explore Spain like a local. And today we're going super local. I'm here with Lauren, Hola. Uh, my co-founder in Devour Tours. We're in San Sebastian at the moment uh, with our Devour Tours team because we're uh, filming a whole bunch of videos for our Devour Tours YouTube channel, which you can also check out. Today we've got an afternoon off, so we're heading into the Gros neighborhood, uh, which is across the, the inlet on the other side from the historic center where the pincho bars are super local because we want to see uh, how the locals eat pinchos pinchos, what pinchos the locals eat, and show you guys some real off the beaten path experiences. And we're going to give you lots of tips for eating pinchos. We have a long list of places. Do you think we can hit them all? I hope so. We're going to try and hit them. We're going to hit it really hard. One pincho in each place. Let's go. So this first pincho bar we're in is called Bergara. It's been around since the 1950s, and it's only in the last few decades that they've evolved into pinchos, because pinchos is actually quite a new concept uh, in the world in San Sebastian and the Basque Country since the, since the middle of the 20th century. Uh, and there's certain ways that you have to do pinchos. So the locals, for example, don't go out and just eat millions of pinchos uh, every day for lunch, for example. How they do it is they go to a pincho bar uh, and they have one, maybe two pinchos and the specialties of the house. So you'll see in pincho bars all the spread of a million things behind us, but each place has one or two specialties. So you want to ask, ¿Cuál es la especialidad? What is the specialty? And they will tell you, we just asked this gentleman behind us, and that's what you dive into, uh, that specialty. You have one and then you go to another one. Uh, so don't just stay at one bar. And when you're out for pinchos, there's different drinks that you should really focus on. And one of them is cider, Basque cider. It's poured from a height uh, because that's how you, you release the flavor. Uh, the, the cider it pours from a height and it breaks open the, the flavors. It breaks open the bubbles. It's such a huge tradition here. The Basques have been drinking cider for millennia, uh, long before uh, there was uh, wine being drunk here or beer. Uh, and it's really buttery and dry. It's not sweet cider. It is so good, it's so refreshing. Okay, time to try these two pinchos, these famous pinchos here. So this pincho that they're famous for, you have to order it from behind the bar. It's not sitting on the bar. Uh, and it's called a chalupa. This is mushrooms, langostinos, and with uh, cheese. Mm. Wow. It's creamy, it's mushroomy. I love the umami flavor in that. So a perfect start, I think, to our to our pincho crawl. Next one, we're gonna go for anchovies. Now I love anchovies. I know people are scared of them often. So in here is a boquerón, which is a vinegar marinated anchovy and a salt cured anchovy. Uh, let's see. There's a reason that combination is called a matrimonio or a marriage, because it is perfect marital bliss, those two together. You've got the, that vinegar, that saltiness. Wow, I'm ready. Another swig of cider, and then we're heading off to the next pincho bar. Muchas gracias. All right, a little more cider down the hatch. So refreshing, perfect for midday drinking. You'll see on this bar, there's not a lot of stuff on display uh, on the bar. Now, one thing to realize is that a lot of the beautiful displays of pinchos here in San Sebastian are actually built for tourists. Uh, because when locals go out, often what you're gonna order is not something that's on display. You're not gonna grab that plate buffet style. You're actually gonna know what the specialty is and they come from the kitchen. So you actually have to order them from the menu, but they're still pinchos. So you see the pinchos on display, but there's pinchos on the menu that are hot, that they cook often to order, and those are the best ones. You have to know what those are. So don't necessarily be led astray by what's in front of you. Okay, Bar Ricardo has been around for uh, around 50 years as well. Famous for this very long looking uh, croqueta. So, muscle. Mmm, wow. That is pure muscle flavor. You can see the color in there. Uh, you can see the color. It's not just super bechamel -y, like bad croquetas. This is like, this is good. This is delicious and strangely long. Okay, two bars down. Now into number three. Next stop is a bar called Zabaleta that is famous in Gros for its tortilla de patata with uh, pepper in it. So these new friends behind me uh, have told me, uh, confirmed for me that the tortilla here is famous uh, here. And look, they've got four people, four tortillas. And that's why I say pinchos is all about the specialties. So they know that the, the tortilla is a specialty here. You come and you order that and probably only that. And then if you're gonna have more, you move on. So the locals here confirming it. ¿Qué tal la tortilla aquí? 
very good and very happy with the tortilla. All right, I'm going to go inside with Lauren and try some tortilla. Muchas gracias, chicos. Agur. You can see here in this bar, Tabaleta, that they've only got a few pinchos on display, and that's really important to remember. This is, this is for the locals, so it's not about sort of teasing the tourists with incredible displays of pinchos. These are the things they do well, and there's a few of them and only a few of them. So these guys have been making this tortilla since the 70s, but what happened is about five years ago, a French uh, food writer came uh, and wrote about the tortilla and how good it was, and it just went viral. Uh, and since then, it's just tortilla, tortilla, tortilla. You can see them behind them, they just stack these up. These are new. Uh, they do 100 tortillas a day. Wow, it is creamy. I love my tortilla yeah. creamy. Mm. That is really good. Perfect amount of salt, perfect creaminess. Mm. That is really, really good. When you're out for pinchos, there is one that you always have to try. It is the classic, it's the original pincho, and it's called the Gilda, uh, and it's this guy. It's got anchovy, uh, pickled peppers, and olives, uh, and it's named after Rita Hayworth, which, who was in the film Gilda uh, in the 50s, I believe, and she was hot and spicy, and so this is the hot and spicy pincho, and it's like, this about you know, 50, 60 years ago was the first pincho that was ever invented in San Sebastian, and if you have a big mouth, you can do it in one bite. Mm. Mm. Vinegary, salty, so good. Only a little bit of cider left. Ciao, gracias por la tortilla. Agur. The drink we're having here is rosé, another really popular drink, particularly during the day here in San Sebastian uh, and throughout the Basque Country. This is a rosé from Navarra, which is uh, another region off to the uh, east of here. Uh, and this is a Grenache, uh, Garnacha rosé. Uh, look at that beautiful color on there. Mmm, wow, it's very, very rich. Compared to French rosés that are much lighter, this has a touch of that kind of almost red wine flavor. You can see that the, the skins have been left for quite a while to get that deep color and that, and that slightly deeper flavor. Really delicious. We have here a flauta with panceta ibérica de Joselito. What does that mean? So it means this beautiful light breadstick that's been wrapped in, in cured uh, pork belly and from the Iberian uh, black hoofed pig. What a mouthful, uh, both to say and to eat, but let me try it. Mm, wow, so light, but just so beautiful, that, that slightly greasy, um, but very rich little pork belly that's in a fine layer that's been wrapped around it. Absolutely delicious. The other dish we have is cod, in a garlic soup. Uh, mm. Oh wow. Oh that is really really good. So it's a garlic soup which is a very traditional dish throughout Spain. Uh, there's a little bit of spiciness in there as well and the very slightly gelatinous um, and delicious flavor of the cod. Cod uh, bacalao is such a huge uh, ingredient and dish here in the Basque country and these are the cheeks from the cod. Ah. It's, all, it's awesome, you have to come here and try this. Mata la uva, try the soup, delicious. Four down, we're just checking the, the Google map to see what's coming up next. That place was really, really good. Uh, not full at all, although it took a little space that, that uh, cod dish. All right, what can you see, Lauren? What's next? Okay, we are on the way to Aitzgorri. Aitzgorri, uh, my Basque is terrible, but uh, <laughs> it sounds delicious. Okay, now we're in Aitzgorri, a new place. Uh, we've ordered the ravioli, uh, which has foie and apple, and pairing it with chacoli, another drink that you have to try when you're out for pinchos in San Sebastian or anywhere in the Basque country. It's the local wine. It's a white wine from a local grape, uh, and it has this wonderful little fizz to it, and it's poured from a height to, to really give it that effervescence. Well, it has it already, but to kind of, to give it a little more. Ah, uh, oh, so good. Crisp, like green apple, uh, the flavor of the north. Um, just so refreshing. It's like you can't even taste the alcohol. Topa, time to hit the pincho. It's hot. It's a ravioli of foie and manzana, foie and apple, uh, and it's been fried. Looks good. It's not my favorite pincho in the world, uh, but the foie in the middle is super creamy, and there's that touch of apple. It's actually pretty, pretty damn yummy, and a perfect thing to pick up with your finger, uh, drop in your mouth, and pair with another sip of chacoli. To give you an idea of the prices, so that pincho, that foie ravioli was 310 and the wine was 180, so 490. Not full at all yet. Five down? 
five down. Five down. The next three places are boom, 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 right next to each other. So, uh, and there's a few famous ones uh, in the mix here. Hello, Nubia. Hi. Hi. She is, uh, it was opened by her father-in-law in 1956 and we have this delicious spread uh, in front of us. We've got pig's ear here. Look at that. Wow. We've got down there, we've got squid in its own ink. We've got beautiful anchovies and stews in here. Fresh uh, mushrooms down the end and fresh uh, piparra peppers that are, that are classic here. Uh, you often have them fried with salt. So I love the variety of this spread. And we have ordered their famous uh, volcano of blood sausage. So I'll leave you in suspense. This is the, one of our best, this is black for the volcano. You just break it. In. Yeah. It looks like a volcano. Oh. Everybody likes it. All right, so here we've got it. The volcano of Mortia with its apple puree and its yolk on top. It's going to break open and become a volcano. We're pairing it with Rioja, a young Rioja. Now, Rioja is a wine region. It's only two hours to the south of here. And if you're drinking red wine uh, in, in Pincho Bars in San Sebastian, you're drinking Rioja. So you just ask for a Rioja or a Rioja Crianza. This is even younger than that. And perfectly fruity, a little chilled. I love it. Ooh, look at that. The volcano. Lauren loved it. She said it's intense but delicious. My turn. I'm going in. Here we go. Mmm. Wow. That is intense but delicious. There's a lot going on there. And that egg. I love how so often in this country uh, we just break an egg over the top of it. It just adds that wonderful gooey richness to it. Uh, can I just tell you, if you're scared of blood sausage, do not fear. Uh, in Spain, first of all, it's delicious. This blood sausage has rice in it, uh, which makes it kind of a little bit crunchy, uh, but it's also a superfood. Blood sausage is the new kale. It is literally a superfood. So you need to get into it now. Thank you. Bye-bye. This place is heaving. The other bars we've been to have been a little quieter, but this place is clearly popular. We heard from our local friends that everything here is amazing, but we're gonna order a couple of different things. Uh, but I just can't get how, over how busy this place is, and it's got such a great energy. So obviously a must visit Pincho Bar in Gros, Bodega Donastiarra. Okay, we've ordered a number of things here because we've been told everything is amazing here. The first is the most original sandwich you'll ever see, which is tuna. Uh, pickled peppers and anchovies called the completo or la completa. Can't remember which. Wow. That's a tuna sandwich on steroids. And with chocolate. I think we're going to camp out here a little bit and break our rule of ordering one pincho in each place. This is the indurain, which is like a. I don't even know what it is. It's like a gilda on steroids, a big chunk of tuna of, uh, of cured tuna at the bottom we've got a cured anchovy we've got pickled peppers a little bit of onion and olive on the top i don't even know how to eat this thing i asked for a knife and fork but i kind of wasn't allowed it so i'm just going in <laughs> i'm going in <laughs> falling apart before my eyes. I have oil running down my chin. It's getting ugly. If you love pickled food, canned fish, the whole deal. There's no way to eat that beautifully. Uh, next dish, next to me, just tomatoes, tomatoes. The beautiful thing about Spanish cuisine is the quality of the ingredients. So this is not a country of necessarily the traditional cuisine is not highly complex with a million ingredients. It's about having a great tomato, a little bit of salt, olive oil, and mm. you can taste you can taste the sun in that. You can taste the sun, the, the, the ripened tomato. And you eat it with your fingers in these kind of places. There's no need to stand on ceremony. Mm. Beautiful, ripe, delicious, sweet tomato. So juicy, salt, great extra virgin Spanish uh, olive oil. 
I could survive on that. There, that half tomato dish was five euros. It was a media. If you don't want to get the full one, ask for a half. But not expensive and crazy delicious. Leaving Bodega Donostiarra, our favorite so far. What a place. It is heaving. It's even heaving on the balcony out here on the terrace. It is just non-stop this place. We have two more stops left. One more savory and then we have dessert. The best torrija, which is a typical Spanish dish here in, well, someone told me the world, but we'll see. Uh, what is this place even called? Gracias. Super full right now. This place is called Ramuncho Berry. Uh, and these guys are famous for this dish, which is uh, a brie uh, dish. Uh, I don't even know what's on the outside. I'm gonna try it soon. Uh, but I think it's been melted a little bit and it's served with a tomato sauce. It sounds super interesting and we've got one of those coming. So we're gonna dig into that and I'm pairing it with a Rioja Crianza. Remember I mentioned earlier Rioja Crianza, which is the Rioja that's been aged for two years, one year in the barrel. And this is like the most common uh, red wine you're gonna be drinking here. Uh, in the Basque country. Uh, always served with a bit of a chill on it. Don't be afraid of the chill. Uh, it's because, look, you want your wine served at cellar temperature, and that's just about 14 degrees Celsius. And so a bit of a chill is good because it will only warm up, and when a wine gets too warm, it falls apart, so. Okay, so we've got the brie, uh, often you'll find that the pinchos are available on the bar, but then they take them into the kitchen to warm them up. Uh, this has poppy seeds on it, and I'm gonna dip it in this tomato sauce. My God, it's huge. I don't quite know how to, how to do this. Oh my God. It's hard, um, but it's really delicious if you're into brie, which I am, luckily. Uh, I'm gonna have a little more. Lauren is behind the camera freaking out. Why don't you use forks? Oh, I thought you were supposed to do it. <laughs> so I ate it completely wrong the first time. Uh, I didn't realize there was knives and forks. <laughs> a little ahead of myself. Now I'm gonna try it with a little more civilized this way. Mm. I mean, it's the breeiness of the brie, the cheesiness, the poppy seed is there. Almost like the crunchiness is if you fried it and the sweetness of the tomato sauce. It's pretty Moorish. It's the kind of thing that's like a naughty delight, a naughty treat, and quite a nice lead-in to dessert, which is coming up next, the best torrija in the world. What is a torrija? Find out. Guys, we're at our last stop. We're at dessert. Uh, we're super full. Um, we've been at eight places. This is number nine, Nineu is what it's called. Uh, a recommendation uh, for their torrija, which we've got here. Now, torrija is a traditional, they call it the Spanish French toast, and that's just underplaying it a lot. It's something we eat at Easter traditionally, and it's bread, it's been soaked in either milk or, water, or wine and honey, and these guys are famous with it, famous for it. I'm pairing it with a uh, rosé, a super dark and dense rosé from Navarra, another one, seems appropriate. I have the sea behind me, the Bay of Biscay, beautiful San Sebastian, uh, and it's time to hit this. Mm, wow. Wow. Creamy. Wow. It's coming in layers. Creamy, but there's the whole burnt uh, caramelized sugar on the top. It's not like any torrija I've ever had before. It's delicious. Uh, I'm going in for more. This would be a perfect place for you to finish your pincho crawl in, in San Sebastian. We're full. We're going for a siesta. I hope you have enjoyed this. Um, give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel. And if you're in San Sebastian, check us out, Devour Tours. Uh, we'd love to show you how pinchos are done and just not let you stumble into these places because it's hard. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of tricks around it. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in San Sebastian. Ciao. Ciao.